Hey YouTube, it's been a while since I made uh, my last video, uh, a year ago to be exact. I had uh, other things in life that I needed to direct my energy towards and uh, didn't have much time to focus on the channel or make any videos for it. But I've decided to pick it up again and uh, this would be the only video for the year 2018. But for next year I hope that I can at least make one video per month and share with you the different things that, uh, that I'm still making. Um, but in any case I'm picking it up where I left it started, starting with uh, the Z80 build. Uh, if you watched my uh, previous tutorials I showed um, how the different elements worked and uh, how to put it all together on breadboard. And um, about a year ago um, I when before I, uh, I, I stopped I finished this whole thing on breadboard and right now you can see a video uh, which shows you um, how it works and uh, displaying just the domain name on the display here um, since then I've put it on the side uh, just stored it in a box and about two weeks ago I took it out I again plugged everything and it didn't work and um, from there on I want to talk to you today about uh, how I moved it from the breadboard to the PCB here and also share with you some, uh, some different insights. So right now you can see um, it's working. Um, I don't have the buses connected. Uh, here I have a panel for it but it's, uh, it's just uh, overburdening for this video. Um, right now it's running a little program which looks about like this and um, we're not going to go into it too much but it basically just takes this little segment here loads it into the RAM then calls the RAM and runs this program from it just to test that everything is working right and it does some elements here still don't work uh, the display and um, uh, the input output it has some problem I need to solve it but uh, for this video uh, we're going to focus on the the process of transfer and the build itself so it's uh, less important and in the next video hopefully um, you will see everything um, in this state but working with the display and, uh, and all that so um, to start off I'm just gonna turn it off here for a moment um, when I built it uh, a year ago on breadboard, as I said, it worked, and now um, I took it out about a year ago, uh, two weeks ago, and it didn't work. And after a few hours of uh, fiddling with it and trying to figure out what I did, and uh, maybe I changed some things uh, a year ago or some wires, I came to a conclusion that the problem comes from the breadboards. So just to show you, I have here two breadboards. This one I've purchased locally, it cost me about 10 euros. This one I've purchased off eBay, it cost me about $1.50 per piece. Um, the difference is that these ones I have them for about 5 years and I've used them in numerous videos and examples that I made and they work perfectly fine where these ones I've purchased specifically uh, just for this uh, build and I even mentioned it in my previous videos but um, apparently after a year they develop some sort of a rust on the contacts here and after probing um, the breadboard itself I came to a conclusion that each one of the wires that was connected on these cheap breadboards from eBay had a resistance of about between 100 and 200 ohms and you can figure out uh, by yourself all these connections here, all the different jumpers on the breadboard. It would give uh, many thousands of ohms resistance and that would cause the computer to just behave erratically. So um, at that point I've uh, said to myself, okay, I'm not going to invest again in buying breadboards just to show that it works on breadboard. Uh, there are enough examples for that in previous videos. I'm just going to take it and uh, move it into uh, uh, a PCB where everything is connected and uh, now it works fine after some debugging of course it's not uh, not like that but um, 
uh, I want to share with you some uh, insights about uh, this whole um, uh, process. So first of all, just to cover the things uh, like I did in previous uh, my previous videos. Uh, here we have the the Z80 CPU. Um, as you can see, I made uh, each module. Uh, I put it on its own uh, circuit board. We're gonna take this apart in a few moments so that I can show you the, all the elements and how I made them. But um, here you can see um, uh, the CPU, here there is the memory mapping section, the clock, um, the input uh, output, currently there is only one single uh, output unit which is this one on the display. Um, we have the raw memory, the RAM memory and the power distribution uh, circuit right here. Um, when I uh, when I made it, uh, I forgot a few things. Uh, we're going to cover them uh, shortly when I see it uh, it fits. But um, when uh, when you're moving from breadboard to uh, a PCB, uh, I obviously have the drawings here. Uh, you can download them. You can also find the links in previous videos. But this is uh, this is basically it. It's much easier uh, when you have everything on breadboard to just follow the wires, take each wire and then uh, systematically just transfer everything. You can see that I, I created these modules where um, all the connections to the data bus and address bus in each one of the modules, they go into these uh, pins which connect to the bus which is underneath and you're going to see it. Uh, once I take everything um, apart here. Um, let's start off by uh, just uh, removing a few of the uh, connections that come between the modules, um, the, the outputs for memory requests and, uh, and interrupts, things like that. I made it um, just with these wires here and these uh, female connectors. I'm going to take them apart just like that and you can see it's just a strand of uh, wires um, I've put some hot glue to hold uh, everything in place one tip that I have for you um, if you want to make these things the easiest way is to just take like um, a, a baking paper which has this uh, uh, non-stick coating on it and you place it you place the connector uh, like that and you put one side then you peel it off and you do the other side uh, you can you can make it even a, a bit nicer by just taking a knife and sort of uh, shaping it so that it's nice and square. Didn't bother with it, but uh, that's that's the way that goes. And from here on, all the modules are uh, separated. I have here power lines that uh, that come in. Eventually, I want to put it all nicely in a on a frame with screws and that everything is uh, holded um, nice in place. So um, I've made these uh, wires which will go here underneath eventually and they will just pop out here from the side and, uh, and power these, uh, these units. Um, let's start off by just taking this piece off. So you can see here, uh, first piece, and it has uh, eight connections to the data bus. That's all it needs to get the output and to show it on the display here. Right now it's not working since uh, when I transferred it, um, I noticed all of a sudden that I made a connection somewhere here on this uh, pin. You can even see the rest of it, don't know if it's that clear. but. Um, it is an output pin and I thought why why the hell did I do that and then I just uh, fixed it but again it still has some problems with the display I need to figure it out hopefully you will see it in the next video uh, then comes this unit off which is the 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 input output uh, mapper so the Z80 will send a signal and uh, uh, this one will uh, transfer the data from uh, from the data bus to this 
unit. So it will basically send a signal to latch this uh, uh, latch here and then it picks up the data and writes it to the display. The display obviously has a microcontroller inside uh, which controls everything but we're doing everything with, uh, with four bits and uh, that's, uh, that's, that's enough. All the connections that come to this, these, uh, this wire, there are just pins. Here I have only one connection, so there's only uh, one pin, but uh, you can see here, for example, that uh, there are several pins coming in and they are distributed eventually to the whole board. The next, uh, the next part is this, uh, this uh, Z80 module. And here you can see that uh, it has a full connection to the bus. 16 pins uh, are the address bus and 8 pins for the data bus. And uh, for the rest, uh, yeah, it's pretty much just like on the breadboard. And just uh, here are the outputs that come from the, uh, from the CPU. I've uh, used um, these copper wires, they come from a telephone uh, wire, the one that goes into the wall. So they're hard, so I can just uh, shape them uh, any way that I want, and they don't come here in the way. They also give a better uh, sort of connection, they don't fiddle, they don't break uh, when you play around with them too much. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the sort of wires that I've used here. Uh, here we have the memory mapper and the clock. Uh, I'm not satisfied with this. I've, I've made the clock um, to run on one hertz uh, to show different examples. And for little programs like, like the one that you saw here, this one, if I connect this module, we can just follow it and see the different um, uh, executions that uh, occur. But once I want to show you things on this display, I will need higher speeds and uh, therefore I'm going to change this a bit, I'm going to make this um, so that I can vary the, the speed uh, between 1 and 30 Hz, I think that's, uh, that's enough. I've never intended to build this, uh, this, this computer to run heavy things to, of fast, uh, sorry, higher speeds, uh, it's just basically sort of a, a, a educational uh, thing just to show how how computers work and how uh, the data is carried on and the different elements interact with each other but uh, yeah that's it I have here a reset button which I can reset the the whole uh, board here um, I've added a few LEDs so that I can track things we have just one for the for the timing and we have these two LEDs which show when the RAM and the, or the ROM uh, is used. And on this module here, which is the output, I have an LED which will go off every time there is an output. And then uh, that's mainly for debugging purposes and just to see that everything is working um, as it should. Um, the next one is the uh, RAM module. And again, same idea, I have uh, 24 pins, 16 for the addresses, 8 for the data, and the rest just comes inputs from here, from the CPU and from the memory mapper. And the last piece is, uh, is the ROM bit. And once again, you can see it's built exactly the same. This, uh, this sort of um, design that I came up with I, uh, helps solve problems. It uh, also um, helps if you want to test each one of these units uh, individually and or demonstrate them, uh, whatever you, you want. Um, the last one is this uh, power distribution module. It's not really connected to the data bus. I've just added um, this, uh, this uh, connector so that I can put uh, another module on it um, and just ride on it. You can see I made these uh, connections here. Didn't uh, cover them like I did with this one. 
simply because I was too uh, eager to try it out and then I left it like that. I will, I will fix it when I, uh, when I have the time. Uh, one thing, uh, when I made it, I forgot um, to put these bypass uh, capacitors here. And um, you can see right now um, a little video of the display of the oscilloscope. And you can see exactly what happens when you forget these, um, or when you forget to put, put these uh, decoupling uh, capacitors on each one of the chips. They are important, but then you get ripples uh, on your voltage. You can see uh, in the video that uh, I have two probes connected, one here to the main power line and one uh, was connected to the power of the CPU. And you can see the, the, the fluctuation that you get there when everything starts to work. Uh, that was fixed by simply putting a 10 microfarad to 20 microfarad and a, a, and a 100 um, nanofarad capacitor here and that stabilized the whole line. The data bus itself, this is what it looks like. And uh, you can see that it's just a PCB with uh, lines on it. It's specifically uh, for buses. And I've connected them in the middle so that I have here these two, um, uh, two uh, segments that I can connect different things on. Obviously you can extend it how far you want. First I thought maybe I will take this and just make my life easier by uh, soldering pins here, just like I did with, uh, with these modules, reverse, just solder reverse pins, and then sort of take this piece and put it on here, but then I would get this one long board, and I would need longer connections between the modules, and it will not look like, like it's flowing in, in, in a single direction. So I went for this, and uh, it's nice. Here we have all the pull downs uh, for the buses, I have basically scratched off the connection here so that it's separated, so that you don't think that it's just uh, short-circuited. And that's, um, that's pretty much it for the build. I'm quite happy with how it came uh, out. I watched, uh, I, I saw online different designs. Most people go for uh, a single um, a printed circuit board and then either they will have the wires um, going on the bottom side um, or the top side, but um, I didn't come across a design that just took each one of the elements and made them separately and you have all these components apart and you can do whatever you want with them and change whatever you want. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. Some important things when, uh, when you uh, make this is that um, you have to, before you power anything on, when you, when you obviously solder everything on a, on a PCB, is you want to check carefully that there are no short circuits here. Uh, when I uh, made the data bus, for example, I, uh, I checked it after I finished and it, has, it had a few uh, uh, short circuits on it. And I spent a good uh, half hour just to find them. One uh, that I found, uh, I ordered these from eBay. They're, uh, I wouldn't say they're good, they're good quality. But you can see here these markings. And they were basically all the points where I had a, a connection between the lines. Um, I checked carefully that uh, there is no uh, connection in the solder points. And what I found is that um, here where the letters were, not on this side, but on this side, there was just a little bit of um, copper left from, uh, from these, uh, these lines. And that basically caused the problem. Again, I went through all these connections. I couldn't find anything that, that connects together until I found those. And each one of these markings, they had just a little dot which I scratched off with a knife and then everything, um, everything was good and all the lines were separated. So uh, <clears throat> that's a tip for you. You want to check obviously all of these, um, that you don't get any short circuits. If you have any and it's like in a critical point and you power it on, there is a good chance that you might damage 
um, one of the elements, especially if it happens on the CPU and you want to, you want to prevent it. Um, I want to, again, I'm not satisfied with all the things that I made here, like this clock. I'm going to change it. In the next video, you're going to see I will be able to vary the speed. I also want to make um, a circuit that would uh, filter out the refresh outputs from the CPU because uh, right now uh, when you connect these uh, outputs on the bus you would get um, both um, what let's say uh, what you want the CPU and the memories to show but also you will get the refresh addresses from the CPU and that sort of confusing when, uh, when you're just trying to follow the code and learn from it. So I want to make a circuit that uh, would filter out these and I basically uh, would just take the input output request from the CPU, monitor it, and um, also from the memory mapper, connect it uh, through transistors that will power on this board when needed and power it off when it's not needed and then I won't get, hopefully, I won't get um, the refresh addresses showing up here. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. Uh, it took me some time to make this video after a year. I'm now in uh, maybe my sixth shot here. But um, I'm satisfied and um, we're going to take this up uh, next year. Hope you liked it and uh, hope you, uh, you enjoyed uh, this whole series. We're going to go further with it once uh, everything is done and again at some point um, we will have to move into code and, and doing different programs once it's finished I really want to do it I still don't have an idea how to make it in a way that uh, let's say will not be boring because if you look on YouTube for tutorials to show you how to program stuff they're pretty much just a boring screen with code and it will be much easier just to give you the code and a link to download it with comments inside and you would understand everything so I'm still thinking how to make this uh, a little bit more interesting and uh, that way we can expand on this whole uh, learning project but uh, that that was it if you want to learn more and uh, you can watch my previous videos uh, they're still on breadboard they will show you how to work with the CPU the memories the memory mapping input outputs everything that you want to uh, know about it and uh, for the rest I wish you uh, a happy new year and um, I will see you in 2019 thank you for watching